For a team that needs trenches, ooh, I know where you need to be. You need to be in Mobile. I'm going to tell you how the Jaguars can improve their fronts on both sides of, of the ball and then be able to find some other players. We'll talk about it in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, everybody? Thank you for joining me. Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, where it's your team every day. And we thank you for making us your first listen. Got to let you know that you can also tap in on YouTube to the Locked On Jaguars page. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and then hit the bell so that you get notifications each and every time we drop an episode. And then wherever you listen to your audio podcast, make sure you tap in there every single day as well so you do not miss an episode of locked on jaguars today's show is sponsored and brought to you by fanduel make every moment more right now new customers get 200 dollars in bonus bets if your bet of five dollars or more wins visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started thank you to my everydayers for joining the show you can be an everydayer just like them if you join the show and listen every single day. All right, it's time to go shopping. I was supposed to be in Mobile, as listeners of the show know, but I had some appointments that I could not reschedule. So I am here in the confines of the t Wig Studios in North Florida, on the north side of North Florida. And um, I'm going to do some shopping today. I saw the measurements from the guys uh, who arrived in mobile for this week's festivities at the super bowl i mean at the senior bowl not the super bowl, not the big game at the senior bowl that is um and i'm impressed i'm impressed because unfortunately the jaguars have some massive massive needs uh, that are glaring at certain positions those positions happen to be the ones where the draft is well represented. So the Jaguars are going to have a chance to really, really help themselves at positions of need. Um, and, it, you know, it's it's good to have those things lined up. It's unfortunate to have so many needs that need to be addressed. But identifying that and moving forward is going to help the Jaguars be able to hopefully get some new talent. Just for the sake of this, this, uh, this discussion, I'm not going to go into whether or not the picks are going to work because of Trent Balky still being a GM. We're just going to, we're not trying to be overly optimistic, but that is what it is. At this point, we have to try to um, streamline our thoughts into, okay, let's just hope he does the right thing. And this is what I hope he thinks the right thing is. We're just taking a stab at it and uh, using our expertise here. Uh, to do the absolute best we can. Plus, it puts us on record for saying the guys, and it puts me personally on record for saying who I like and who I don't based on what I've seen so far uh, and giving you an idea of how the Jaguars are going to have to actually spend their money. And I'm glad we brought the spend the money part up because right now in the Senior Bowl, they're window shopping. They're window shopping because those players are going to be elusive. And what I mean by that is, they're not going to just go over there and be able to prioritize the guys that they want and get all of those guys, right? That's just not the way the senior bowl works. That's not the way the draft works. And and there are a lot of players that aren't at the senior bowl that are are obviously on their radar already. What they're going to have to do is allocate and figure out how they're going to allocate their, their currency. Their currency is draft picks and their currency is what I believe will be a ton of salary cap space based on, the fact that they have a quarterback who's still on a rookie deal and the fact that I think they're going to make some, some cuts or some trades Um, just to get to that real quick, to set all of this up. Free agency is actually the first place that they're going to be able to actually spend money. The draft comes after free agency, obviously, but taking a look at those players, 
knowing who those players are from um, a scouting perspective will affect what they do in free agency, I believe. You really have to look at them both as two separate entities that how you move will affect how you move in the other entity. For instance, the Jaguars need so much help on the offensive line and they need so much immediate help on the offensive line. I think they're going to go into free agency and add two people. And then I think they're going to go into the draft and add another minimum of two people. I think they're going to really attack their weak area very, very hard. The other area that I know that this team is going to attack, I think they're going to add a minimum of three or four guys on the defensive line. Some guys will be depth. Some guys will be rotational pieces. Other guys will be players that they're very, very, very familiar with. So instead of sort of break, trying to break the bank for, I, I don't, Chris Jones, I don't think he, he's even reachable if you're the Jaguars, unless you offer him an astronomical amount of money. The same thing, and he might get tagged. The same thing for Christian Wilkins. And I know that there's a, a lot of love for Justin Matabuike as well from Baltimore. I'd imagine that they're going to have an opportunity to at least have a cup of coffee with any of those guys that they get to the market. And some of those teams aren't prepared to hold on to those players because, you know, they got a lot of other guys that want to get paid. Right. Or you can see them possibly go a route where they for the price of one of those guys, they can add like three different players. So the question is, is in a draft where the defensive interior players while there's a lot of talent uh, at the senior bowl and there's a lot of talent that's out there for a team that has to address both of those areas in heavy ways, the Jaguars are going to seriously have to be judicious to make sure that they find the right player. And then they're going to have to make sure that they allocate the funds the right way. They need wide receiver and corner help as well. Those are two positions. I think that they can also address those are the ones that to me personally, I would really address that. I, I would address unless T Higgins hit the hits the market. And there's some talk about Mike Evans hitting the market, but then you have to consider his age, even though he's still a very, very good player. It depends on where the Jaguars are as an organization. And it depends on how much is Trent does Trent have to win like today, right? It also depends on the perception that people have of the Jaguars around the league. Maybe a guy like Mike Mike Evans is obtainable, and the reason why is because he has actually won a championship. So he's not on that championship or bust type deal. And maybe Mike Evans knows what it's like to play with a great quarterback and then a not so great quarterback, and that he'll look at Trevor Lawrence as, as being a guy who's closer to being great than he is not great. So a lot of those things uh, are factored in, are things that you have to consider, like where you can get the player in the draft. Uh, based on your scouting and based on hopefully your scouting is, is kind of in tune with what other people are doing. Even if there are guys that aren't on your board because they don't fit your scheme or they don't have the traits, you still have to consider them uh, being picked up by other people that don't worry about stuff like that. So that's the game that you have to play too. Like who's going to be able to fall to you. So while you're window shopping early at the senior bowl, those are the guys that you're not going to be able to sign first. Those are the guys that you see first close close up. And I'm talking about the coach and the GM because make no mistake about it. If the coaches have any say on these guys and they do because they'll be at the senior bowl. If they have any say, like I said, which they do, they're going to basically uh, be seeing them for the first time because they were coaching last year. They weren't scouting. So the scouts have been doing all of this work. The GM has done all of this work. The pro personnel side are looking at the guys that are potential free agents and you got to come together with a plan of how you're going to use you, you know, free agency. You may go after guys and you might not get them in the draft. You might have guys ranked and you might not be able to get them. So you got to play this game of where do you uh, attempt to use your resources? Where are you going to put your efforts towards? And you got to have several backup plans. So for this I will tell you who I have decided in free agency the Jaguars have signed. So, so being that this is time to go shopping for help, we're going to start in Mobile. We're going to take a look at who's there. We're going to try to do it just like the Jaguars do it, right? 
We're going to take a look at who's there. We're going to take a look at the guys that we like. And we're going to try to do it through the lens of Trent Baalke, which might be a little bit difficult, but he has at least shown his hand on the type of players he likes. So we'll go through. I'll tell you players at each position group I like and whether it's not a priority or it is a priority. And then in segment number three, we're going to do we're going to do uh, free agency and the draft. Just one way of doing it. We may do it two or three different ways uh, over the next week or two. But today we're going to do it the way I felt like doing it this morning. So hang tough. We're going to start at Mobile. We're going to look at the trenches and the wide receivers and every other position. And then we're going to figure out exactly what the Jaguars should do in segment three. Hang tight here on Locked On Jaguars. What up, good folks? Today's show is brought to you and sponsored by FanDuel. Got to let you know about FanDuel. FanDuel is the absolute truth. And happy big game to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks and placing some super bets. What I really like is it's just a really, really festive day, man. Even if you don't have a, a dog in a fight, you can make you some money, hang out with family, eat good food. It all makes it even sweeter at the end of the game when you're a winner. FanDuel has so many ways you can end up the season with a W or two or three. You can now bet on who will win the Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports book partner of the NFL. All right, running it down here on Locked On Jaguars. I am Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, where it's your team every day. We thank you always for making us your first listen. All right, so let's get down to it. We're going to start Mobile with some of the prospects. With all due respect, I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip right past the quarterbacks. We're not worried about quarterbacks. That's not what we're going to do. Trevor Lawrence is the quarterback. That's just what it is. So we'll go past those guys, and we'll get to running backs. Ray Davis is my favorite running back in this draft, and Breland Allen is my second favorite running back. That doesn't mean that I think the Jaguars will prioritize either one of them. Uh, Breland Allen is not at the senior bowl, but they have a starting running back also. But I do think you have to look at one of these players if they're good enough to be one of those steel guys that you can get that can compete at least for some carries. Um, next year, maybe even moving forward. Remember, Travis Etienne is a free agent. Um, he has one more year left on his contract, on his rookie deal, and that's 2024 unless they put the fifth-year option on him, which that usually doesn't apply to running backs too much. So let's get to the receivers. All of the guys that are uh, there in Mobile, I'm looking to guys that are on the bigger side of things. Xavier Le- Leggett didn't weigh in. Uh, he, he wasn't as tall as people thought. Receiver out of South Carolina is at 6'1" as opposed to being six, two and a half, maybe the arms and the hands aren't as big and that's a red flag for Trent. Uh, he can play. So if, if people want to trash him for that, that's on them. I also love Malachi Corley. He's a, t- he's a tough guy. I- I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, he kind of reminds me when you watch him, he reminds you of a young Antonio Brown with his feistiness with, he ain't going to blow you away with his speed. But he's just going to blow you away with his football ability a little bit. There's a little bit of Debo in him too. And I really like uh, Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky. Devontae Walker really fits what I like the Jaguars to get. And that is a tall, attack the ball receiver that can line up all over the field at 6'3. Marcus Rosemary Saint, Jack Saint, Marcus Rosemary Jack Saint from Georgia is also a guy, 6'2, big body, just made the team better and just got and was able to do a lot of things at Georgia. So those are the guys that I'm looking at. If they come away with one of those guys, that's even cool uh, first round or day two. But those are guys I really like a lot. Ben Sinat is my favorite uh, tight end of the draft from Kansas State. I don't think it's going to be priority to take him where his value is going to be probably in the third round. Somebody may move up to late in the second round, but third or fourth round. I just think they have so many other things that they'll be concentrating on. Now we get to the offensive tackles. There's a lot of them. I think 
because of what I've seen and what I've heard, I think the Jags move Anton Harrison to left tackle. That's just me. I think that's why. I wonder why they didn't do it last year. I just wonder why they didn't do it last year, especially when Cam was gone. But I think that they felt like when Cam came back, they, their best offensive line was going to be with Cam at left tackle and Harrison at right because Cam probably can't play on the right side, whereas Harrison can do both. A lot of talk about Tyler Guyton because the Jaguars had so much success last year with Anton Harrison from Oklahoma State. I mean, from Oklahoma, that they go right back. That's not how this works. Guyton is a different type of prospect. Although he's a pure right tackle, he does need a little bit of help. I, I do think guys like Amarius Mims, who aren't there right now, as well as uh, Taliesi Fuoga, Fuaga from Oregon State. I don't think they'll be there when the Jaguars pick at 17 from the intel that I have gotten. But uh, the Jaguars will obviously, uh, in my opinion, have to address the right tackle position. Uh, a lot of interior linemen I like. I mentioned them real quick. Dominique Pooney is a real good player from Kansas. I've talked about Christian Haynes uh, from uh, UConn, but unfortunately uh, too short and probably arms aren't long enough. Uh, of course, everybody's mock draft favorite, Cooper Beebe, Javion Cohen uh, is in there. I'm a big Brandon Coleman fan from TCU. He played tackle, but I think he's better suited for guard, but he's a big burly kid. Layden Robinson is a real good player also out of Texas A&M. Zach Frazier, of course. I would be remiss if I did not mention Jackson Powers Johnson. Uh, Frazier may be a little bit too short for bulky, but they need to get a fighter at center. And I did not give them one in free agency. So I would suspect that they get somebody in here to compete with Luke Fortner. And I know everybody is happy about that, but I anticipate that they're going to tap in, whether it's Cedric Van Pran, who opted out of the senior bowl. Uh, there's two guys named Kingsley in here. Kingsley Eguakwan from Florida, a center. And Kingsley Suamataya from BYU. I like Kingsley Suamataya. I, I really do like his game. I watched him all year. He sort of started to fall in the draft process because at, at first he was really listed high at tackle. But I think he's another one that plays guard who I really, really like. Um, and, of course, he's not here, but uh, uh, Barwin out of um, Duke. I really, really like him as a player as well. He played left tackle, but uh, I think he's also a guard. Some people have even talked about him playing center um, in uh, the National Football League. So uh, we'll have to see if that's going to be uh, the case uh, whatsoever. So. Uh, looking at it right now, before we get to some of these defensive players, uh, there's a lot here. There's a lot here at the position of need for the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's Barton, B-R-B-A-R-T-O-N, not Barwin, Connor Barton, who is uh, thought of as a guy who can play left guard, right guard, or center. So there's a lot of value. It depends on uh, what Coach Rauscher and, and of course, Balky and Peterson think about his ability but they always talk about guys who are extremely versatile so there you go you can think uh, about those guys uh, uh as, as well um getting to the defensive side of the ball there's a there's a spot on the line that nobody ever talks about every time you mention Trayvon moving inside everybody always talks about Trayvon playing three technique and I told him last if he plays three, three technique at 272 he's the smallest three technique in the NFL so uh, they like Trayvon at edge, and it's weird. I keep mentioning the fact that everybody was screaming for more edge depth, and they didn't do it, and they probably needed to, but no one's really screaming for that this year because the offensive line and interior problems seem to, and the big wide receiver issue seems to be the biggest thing for the Jaguars. And now nobody's mentioning that. But nobody ever talks about the position that has been manned by Foley Fadakaza, who probably won't be here. And a lot of times when he was hurt, was uh, had um, Adam Gostas there at that spot. That's where Trayvon gained eight, nine pounds. That's where he played. He played the big end position if they were lining a guy up at five technique. But I think he's going to be an end. I think he's going to have his hand on the ground and be your base end in a 4-3. They will get Josh Allen back some kind of way. I have him 
coming back. But there are a lot of people, too many, too many for me to name, that could be really, really good edge depth. I like Darius Robinson. You have to look at guys and look at their measurables. Darius Robinson is long, just like they say they like their guys who can play a little bit of five technique, who can be a big end in, in a four uh, base, uh, four man front. I really like him and Adisa Isaac. I really like him a lot as well inside cedric johnson is intriguing because of that same length and size that i talk about those are the guys on the inside that i really really like uh rook i'm gonna try this rook a row 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 okay from clemson watch him athletic freak hard to figure out what position he plays but guys like that with this new system are very very valuable athletic long we'll figure it out once he gets here just put him in right uh, the linebackers, I like Peyton Wilson. I like Cedric Gray. The bottom line is I think they are sold on the guys that they have. Uh, so that's where they're going with that. Uh, defensive backs, I'm a big Josh Newton fan. Everyone knows uh, I love me some Nate Wiggins, who's not obviously um, listed here, but I love me some Nate Wiggins. The thing is, is he's no relation for one, but he can really, really play. A lot of good football players. Max Melton from Rutgers is a good player. And I'm a big Jarian Jones fan, too. So look for – and Mike St. Ristol, I, I like him, too. So watch the Jaguars try to get corners, guys that can fight, guys that can compete, and, and guys that are smart, and finally maybe settle that nickel spot a little bit. All Out of all the safeties, there are a lot of guys here to really, really like. I think the Jaguars are pretty much settled at that position. But Cameron Kitchens is the guy, obviously, if he starts to fall, the Jaguars can take a look at him. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run through what I think free agency in the draft will look like if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'll get into that in just a second here on third and final segment of Locked On Jaguars. Passion, drive, and patient. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps you ride or die. Your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. That's right, ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. Thank you for going, joining us in segment three here on Locked on Jaguars. Right before I get into what I think the Jaguars should do in free agency, I'm going to let you know that Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked on plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked on Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, let's do it. Let's get to the exercise. I told you that I gave the Jaguars some stuff. Okay, here's what happens. The Jaguars re-signed Josh Allen to a long-term deal, all right? Make it really, really cap-friendly the first year. I think they retain Calvin Ridley, franchise tag him at first, re-sign him a little bit later. All right, they delve into free agency. And remember I said, instead of going after Chris Jones, or instead of going after Matt Abuike, instead of going after uh, uh, Christian Wilkins, I said they can get two or three players for one, and this is what I think they do. I think they're going to rotate guys and be very, very multiple across the front. So here I go. I'm going to take a stab at it, all right? Either Dorrance Armstrong, a reserve player, this is your depth, or A.J. Epineza, or Epineza, however you say it. He's from Buffalo. Big, tall kid, can be that third edge guy, get a lot of playing time. You're not going to give them a one-year prove-it deal. You give them a two- or three-year deal, paying them six or seven million dollars a year, and I think that gets one of those guys. I'm a big Dorrance Armstrong guy. I like Dorrance Armstrong as a rotational player. See, these guys don't have illusion of grandeur for what they're doing, but if you give them guaranteed money over a number of years, you're going to get production from them that you can't get. So that'll give you your third edge rusher. Now you're going to probably need two more, and you can focus on those guys in the draft. How about this? 
Let's hurt the opposition. Let's get Danico Autry. I know he's 32 years old, but he's 6'5", 285, and that's exactly what I keep talking about, playing that big end position. Playing that big end position, there you go. There's your starter right there at the five technique, or if you're going to play the big end spot, or if you're still going to line up with three people on the front, if that's what you're going to do, then this is the guy that I believe that you can go after and get. Uh, who's going to man the middle? Let's get Sheldon Rankins in here. Very, very familiar with our new defensive coordinator. They were together, and, and he's an older player, much like Autry. Uh, even though he's not as old, I think he'll be 30 this year. But he's stout, plays the run. He can also generate some pass rush. See, so you just got three people for the price of one. And that's the way I think the Jaguars would go, and they all have these traits. On the offensive line, I've been on it for, for weeks. I want Robert Hunt. That's the guy that I'm going to start with. You say you need to get bigger and physical. How about 6'6", 335, playing right guard for Brandon Scherf, who's gone. I'm going to try to trade Cam Robinson to a team like New Orleans or to a team like Miami or to another team that can uh, work out a long-term deal with him and uh, but get something for him. I, I guarantee you, if you trade him right now, you I don't know what the compensation will be because teams got to got to pay him. Maybe a fourth round pick, maybe a third rounder if you catch a team that's really, really hungry enough. So now that's what that's what you have. You have Josh Allen and Ridley back. We've added Dorrance Armstrong, Sheldon Rankins. Uh, yeah, Dorrance Armstrong, Sheldon Rankins, and Denitro, Denico Autry to the line. Now we're going shopping for young cats. You don't need a whole bunch. You don't need a whole bunch more on your defensive line because – now you have three legitimate pass rushers. You have a certified five technique or certified big end if you're going to stay in a three, four front, a guy that you can also move inside. I'm looking for length. I'm looking for power. I'm looking for strength in numbers when it comes to the defensive side of the ball. And I think that's what you have. I think you start out, if you're in a four-man front, you'll start out with rankings inside along with uh, Devon Hamilton and then Allen and Trayvon outside. If you line up in a uh, three man front with your two edges, though, that's Allen, that's also Trayvon. And now you have Danico Autry Rankins. Rankins at three technique. I'm sorry, you're gonna push Roy Robinson back to depth, but he'll be a nice depth piece, which is probably where he should have been in the first place. And then, of course, Devon Hamilton. Now you turn around in the draft. And in the draft, what haven't you addressed? How about big wide receiver or corner when you get to number 17? And there will be guys there, and there will be a lot of people that fit the bill for Jacksonville. You could also come back at that point and go with the right tackle if one of them falls to you at that point. Or you can move back and get extra ammunition and pick up maybe an extra two and a four or a two and a three, come back to the end of the first round, and now – it's best player available amongst the offensive line, corner, and wide receiver. That's the way that I would go with it. If it's up to me, the way that these boards have been looking, I think the big wide out will be there right in that spot, and you're snatching because you're going to come back and hit that. So in the first round, if all things are even, and I'm looking right there, I come back with the big wide out. I come back. In the second round, with the way that the boards have been working, I come back with the best offensive lineman I could find. If I got an extra second round pick, that's when I'll come back with best player available at those remaining positions. So you can double back on wide receiver. You can get corner, depending on if that corner matches up with the things. You can hit the nickel spot right there in the second round. And now you can start to really see this team elevate and push up. I didn't use a whole bunch of the senior bowl guys here because, like I said, there are a lot of guys who aren't in the senior bowl. I think at 17, it's going to be the right tackle or if a corner falls to him, that'll be there again. The wide receiver, I believe you can wait on because of the way that the boards fall. What you're not going to do, I don't think you're going to get a starting corner past the second round. You're going to get a wide receiver that can help you beyond the second round. You're going to have to channel your inner uh, less need and find a wide receiver uh, that you can that you can draft. It depends on how the board starts to fall. But remember, Malachi Corley is not a big guy, but man, can he play? Just remember that he is somebody that can absolutely 
play and snatch the ball out of the air. But at some point, they need tough guys. They need guys that are going to fight for the ball. Uh, so it would not surprise me if they went early and got the big wide receiver, especially depends on what they do in free agency. But remember, Calvin really is going to be your one based on pay. And your number two is already based on pay. Maybe, maybe they do something in free agency with a veteran, find a veteran receiver who who is a big guy. We talked about Mike Evans. There's Gabriel Davis. There's other people. But they need to get some young blood here at wide receiver this year, especially since it's so deep in the draft. In the first two rounds, minimum third round, they need to add some some height and some length to their wide receivers to give Trevor another weapon. But they got to come back in around the, the fourth round, depending on what pick they give up for Calvin Ridley, too. That's why I say moving back is a little bit of an option. That's where this team can now hone in and start addressing some of these needs. There are going to be guys in the fourth round that can help your offensive line this year. But mainly, they'll be able to help your offensive line moving forward and create a whole bunch more competition for the Cooper Hodges of the world, all of those Tyler Shatleys of the world, Walker Little, all of those kids. They, they're going to have to prove it this year and see what they're working with. Take a stab at it and take a look at it yourself and kind of view it from the way that I did. Look at it. Try to look at it through the Jaguars vision and be positive about it to see how they can add to their team to help the rest of the season. Make sure you guys follow me all week long. I'll try to get some guys on from the senior bowl. My man, Dane, and my man, Keith Sanchez, down there working real hard for Locked On NFL Draft. We'll try to get them on this week and give you some more updates of what's going on. Until then, you guys take care of each other. I'll see you later here on Locked On Jaguars.